At this point, it's probably a good idea to give the particles some sort of a size association. And on the emit from surface compound, I'm going to set the size and shape. I'm going to make the particles spherical so that they can occupy a volume. And if I have a look at my grid, uh, the XSI unit being the size of one of these grid units here, I'm probably going to have to use a size of about 20. That might be a little large. Try 10. still a little bit large, so I'm trying to get the scale here. Yeah, that should work out fine. So I'll use a size of about uh, 5.9, so let's say 6, and then I'm going to vary around that, of course, just to get some smaller and some larger particles. So if I plug into the uh, size attribute, uh, another randomized value by range, if 6 is our size, I'll randomize around that by using values between, say, 4 and 7. Maybe I can even go a little smaller so I can get some really tiny little particles in there. So I get even more breakup now before the particles all die off. I'm going to make the particles die off in a more interesting way, but again, at least the age limit is just killing the particles and uh, not having me deal with their uh, overhead. Now that I've got the particles uh, emitting with a certain size, I'm going to emit them upwards in the direction that good fire goes. We're going to do that with forces, so I'm going to clear off my filter menu and move back under my particle tasks to the forces menu where I'm going to need a add forces compound. And I don't really want gravity to act on these particles, so I'm not even going to introduce gravity into the equation. These particles are going to be moving consistently upwards. So I'm going to add in a force to port 2. And the first thing I'm going to do is give the particles a slight upwards motion of about 0.2 units per second. So the particles are now streaming upwards. And they die out about around the top of the house. Okay, So that works out pretty well. If I want to slow down the particles, I wouldn't really use the forces uh, that I've added in force 1, the small, uh, small upwards force, I would probably use a drag force to control it. A drag force gives me a, a bit of uh, granular control. So I'll add a drag force to my add forces compound, but I'm first of all going to have to insert a new port. So I'll insert it into a force 2 port. So now when I press play, the particles move a lot slower, but of course I can ramp down the drag to allow the particles to move. So at 0.001, they don't move much differently from their initial state. But if I use a value of 0.01, they do die off uh, a little quicker, sort of halfway uh, up the side of the house. So I can split the difference between the two of them to get my optimal uh, movement on the particles. So good, the particles are growing outwards nicely and moving upwards nicely at a nice slow enough pace that suggests uh, a fairly powerful explosion. So let's build on this from here. I'm just going to actually uh, replace this force 1 input here with a vector force, just so it's a little easier to read. So I'll use a 3D vector uh, set to point 0.2 in Y. Okay, that'll work just fine for me. Close the Explorer as well. So I'll make some more room in the ice tree for all my nodes. And uh, look at building a bit more functionality in.